I thought some people might be interested in filters, so I wanted to do a video all about particulate filters. So, um, when you have a CBRN filter, an NBC filter, or an ABEC P3 filter, they always have particulate filters on. And what the particulate filter does is stops particles. So, as in the name, that's things like dust, sand, whatever. Small, you know, almost grain things, visible to the eye or almost invisible to the eye but much larger than the oxygen, I guess, molecules. Um, and what these do is catch all this stuff in the filter to stop it coming through. Now, the interesting thing is when you buy these, the manufacturers always put an expiry date on them, but they don't really expire. Um, so here you go. I think this one was made, I um, don't know if it has a production date on it, but it does have the expiry. So it expires 01 2027. So I assume this was either made in 2007 or 2017. It's one I bought it new in a packet. It was only about five or six pounds off Amazon. But very lightweight, 40 millimeter filter. But it's just a particulate one. Doesn't stop vapor. So how does this work? Basically, you have lots and lots of little bits of paper in it. Um, you can also use other materials such as cotton, fiberglass, or they used to use asbestos for this. That's what the asbestos was used for in mask filters. And that's got very, very small holes in it. Holes small enough to let the oxygen and the air through, but holes that are too small to, um, you know, obviously let any of the dusts and nasty things through. So there's a few different ways you can have these configured. Obviously this is on a 40 millimeter one. As I said, on a typical NBC filter, this sits at the front, you have your charcoal layer, and then you have another filter, another sort of very brief particulate filter at the back to keep the charcoal from coming out. So, you get the 3M masks like these, and you can get particulate filters for these as well. Let me just take this one off to show you. So, this is how they work on these. The air comes in all around there, and then it obviously has to go through the filter. And I'm pretty sure that's fiberglass looking at it. I don't know how well the camera's going to focus on that. But to my eye, this definitely, and my hand, this definitely feels like fiberglass. Uh, these work very well. I was using these in a very dusty environment when I was volunteering. These, you know, stopped absolutely everything getting through. So, what are the ratings of particulate filters? Because you can basically get three types of particulate filters when you go to prop ones. If you tied a handkerchief or something over your mouth, yeah, that would give you some particulate protection, but not all that much. So, um, what do these basically have in them then to... Um, do it so you get p1 and this is i think the european ratings for them because there's you know different ratings based on different countries so the most primitive level you have is a p1 filter and that will stop you know nuisance levels of dust pretty much but you never really want to use it for anything too seriously then you have p2 <clears throat> which can be used you know against a lot more stuff p2 is you know you should always use p2 as a minimum but i'd always recommend just going for p3 uh, P2 is where it can stop lots of smaller things that could be, um, you know, slightly dangerous. So if you're sanding wood, you know, drilling into very fine materials, that would stop the dust from that. P3 is the one you ideally want because it stops even the smallest asbestos fibres. And it also stops um, things like pharmaceutical dusts. So if you worked in a sort of industry where you might be having to grind uh, tablets or you're making tablets or something like that, um, the dust from that, if you inhale that, that can kill you from an overdose, from whatever, you know, the stuff is, whether it be painkillers, you know, whatever. So um, people who work with pharmaceuticals have to have a P3 filter if they're the people actually manufacturing it or whatever. Now, as much as I say dust masks are useless, this is pretty interesting because it has the sort of things like the chart for what different level of particulate protection protects you from. So I'll just read it as they go up. But you should hopefully be able to see from that that P2 does most stuff, but P3 is the one that does nearly everything apart from a couple of different things. And I think that's just things where you need the charcoal in the filter because it creates vapor, not just dust. Okay, so for a P1 filter, it works for demolition, so knocking walls down and stuff and brick dust and stuff like that. Filler dust, concrete plaster and paint dust. So that's not a great you know deal of things, is it? Um, particulate level two is for demolition again, because each consecutive level will do all the things the previous ones did. So I'll just say what it does that the other one didn't. Groundwork, scabbing, shock cretting, um, machining, grinding, polishing. Um, I think the lishing's ones that's not included yet. Galvanized welding, rust, 
Oh, uh, sorry, no, Rust is, yeah, Rust is the one that this one does not galvanise welding, sorry. Uh, and then Wood Soft and Hard, Plastic Dust, Boiler Maintenance, and then the f third level particulate one, I'll just read through everything it does do. Demolition, groundwork, low level asbestos, scabbing, shock, crea uh, shock retting, molten metal handling, machining, grinding, polishing, MIG and TIG, spot welding, brazing, silver solder, galvanised welding, rust, filler dust, concrete plaster, wood, soft and hard, plastic dust, paint dust, boiler maintenance. So as you can see from that, if you're doing any of these, it doesn't mention pharmaceuticals and stuff like that, because I think this is more if you're getting one of these as a workman. As I said before, don't get these, get a proper 3M type mask, just because the face seal on these is crap, and you will end up inhaling stuff, if it's more than just a nuisance level of background work. Right, the great thing about... P3 filters is they offer very little breathing resistance even at the P3 level when there's no charcoal involved. Very uh, like just breathing normal air and as you can see the mask is a uh, pressure seal to my face. So yeah, P3 ones are very comfortable uh, in terms of breathing resistance, very lightweight. Obviously as I said they do not filter vapour and gas, that's an important thing to note, that's what the charcoal does in the filter. But P3s that you breathe very easily and block lots and lots of hazardous things you're actually more likely to encounter than the gas type scenarios. So, as said, it works just with a simple level of um, paper or fiberglass, whatever else. But as I said, always go through the ones that are P3 level. In other countries they use different rating systems, but you'll be able to work out, using this logic, what P3 equates to, and just get the one that's like the N100, or whatever they call it, equivalent, you know, a total protection filter. So yeah, as I said, there's actually lots of practical uses for these um, sort of things. Um, like if you're working with anything that involves sand or dust or you know anything like that um, obviously as you're doing more hazardous stuff like with asbestos and that you definitely need these now I'm saying don't go for a dust mask, go for a 3M mask like this because it creates a proper face seal it's not like those uh, dust masks that although you can crimp the metal around your nose you know it's still leaving big gaps in the side where air follows the path of least resistance if you have some of those on you might cut down the amount of dust you get into but you're not actually going to protect yourself very well Yep, so there you go. That's what a particulate filter does, all about particulate filters. I'll do another one of these on charcoal, where I talk about charcoal and charcoal impregnation when I get round to doing that video. But yeah, this is all about what particulate filters do.